the time Michael Jordan punched Steve Kerr. Now, as we all know, Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. He's done things that, well, we've never really seen before. And he's always said that the reason why he was so good was because he was so determined. He was so motivated. But the real reason why was because he was so competitive. We all know that. Michael Jordan was by far the most competitive person I think I've ever seen. And the amount of stories I've heard, and I'm pretty sure you have too, of Michael Jordan and his competitive nature is just insane. But the story that I'm about to tell you is one that doesn't really get talked about often. And personally, I think it's one of the best Michael Jordan stories, not because of what happened, but because of the end result and how it affected both players heading into future years as teammates. As you know, if you're subscribed to the channel, I like to share stories that people don't really talk about. So if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe and enjoy the video. Here's the time Michael Jordan punched Steve Kerr. Also, very quickly before I get started, is that there's going to be clips of Michael Jordan as a cartoon, and it's actually Michael Jordan telling the story of what happened just as a cartoon, so if you want to watch the whole thing, I'll leave a link in the description, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now, it's known by many that teammates fight, but most fights that happen between teammates normally stay behind closed doors and eventually get leaked after the players are retired or just traded away. People can't honestly expect you know, myself and Shaq to be together for 20 years and not have an argument and not have a fight. That's just like fantasy land. That's not going to happen. Yeah, arguments my rookie year, my second year, this year, we're probably going to have many more arguments. Did he connect on the punch you threw? No. <laughs> no, no. No, I was swift on the on the duck. You know? <laughs> he ducked out of it. Did yeah, you throw we, one back? Yeah, well, we just kind of got into like a pushing and shoving match. <laughs> if you fight with Michael Jordan, out of all people, I don't think that you should take exception. Not because he wasn't like anyone else. Well. Technically, he wasn't like anyone else, but because of how competitive he is. And Steve Kerr knew that. But Steve Kerr also didn't know what he was thinking. And I quote, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Laughing as he recalls his scrap with the Chicago Bulls legend in 1995 at the Bulls training camp. It's Michael Jordan. It's the greatest player ever. But I was pretty competitive myself. And I think I kind of play with a chip on my shoulder. I had to or I wouldn't have made it. Now, these words from Steve Kerr are true, but I don't know why, maybe it's just me, but I can't imagine Steve Kerr in a fight, he just seems like a nice guy. Anyway, that's besides the point, because he obviously was in the fight, and so was Michael Jordan. In fact, I'll let Michael Jordan do most of the explaining, because, well, he can obviously explain the story better than I can, because he was obviously there. <laughs> this is coming back after the disappointing playoff game. Everybody was saying it was Scottie Pippen's team. But I was trying to work my way back up to where in 93 it was Michael Jordan's team. So it all started in 1995 when Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr got matched up in a scrimmage. It was very intense. Michael Jordan heard all the critics after the Bulls playoff loss to the Orlando Magic and intended to silence them. The postseason defeat to the Magic in the conference semifinals, his first series loss since 1990, and many believe that his best years were behind him. I mean, when you think about it now, he literally did just come out of retirement that year, but because Jordan is, well, Michael Jordan, at 32 years old, Jordan was wanting to prove the haters otherwise. So yeah, the offseason started, and this particular scrimmage came around. All Jordan could think about was the haters from the previous season, and he just wanted to prove them wrong. Instead, Phil Jackson, obviously the coach of the Chicago Bulls at that time, thought it would be a smart idea to spice things up a little bit. And this one day, I don't know, I was just in a very feisty, feisty mood. And Phil put Steve Kerr opposite of me. But he was giving Steve all the calls. And I'm getting like really ticked off. Anyway, Jordan was furious, and as a notorious trash talker, he and Kerr started talking trash on a couple of possessions, and then it just escalated from there. Now, we all know that Steve Kerr seems like the nice guy, and to be honest with you, the way that I visioned the event, I think Jordan probably said something a little bit too far, and that's how it all clicked, but I couldn't tell you for sure since I obviously wasn't there. Steve Kerr then says, I took exception to something he said. So I was talking back, and I don't think Michael really appreciated that. And we got in the lane, and he gave me a forearm shiver to the chest, and I pushed him back. And next thing you know, our teammates were pulling him off me. One thing led to another. Next thing you know, I found him real hard, he fouls me real hard, and then before I knew it, I hauled off and just whacked it right in the, in the eye. All the anger, all the, the comments of people saying that I'm, my skills are eroded, and I'm, I wasn't the same Michael Jordan, and I was letting everything go. 
Of course, Steve Kerr got the worst part of the incident. I mean, he ended up with a black eye, but that's pretty much what happened to most players when they challenged Michael Jordan. But the thing was, and this is the main reason I wanted to make this video, is that after the fight happened, Steve Kerr earned Michael's respect. But yeah, Steve Kerr, only six foot three against Michael Jordan, you would assume that he would get the worst of it, and he did. He ended up with a black eye. He threw some punches before, it was all broken up too, so good on him. <laughs> The next day in practice, <laughs> I'm looking at Steve. Steve got the biggest black eye. And when I saw him, I went right up to him. I said, you know what? I'm totally sorry. I just lost my temper. He says it was partly my fault, too. I knew not to push you. We two grown men and teammates stood there for almost 20 minutes apologizing to each other. From that point on, I've always respected him. He didn't give up. He fought back. You know, he may have gotten the worst end of it, but I respect him. Now, the fact that I found really interesting and completely forgot about was the fact that Steve Kerr and Michael Jordan didn't really have much of a relationship at this point. They'd only played together for two months, so the fact that Steve Kerr actually retaliated to Michael meant that Steve Kerr most definitely made Jordan respect him from that night forward. Jordan explained after the incident that he apologized. And I called back to the Bulls practice facility, and they gave me Steve's phone number, and I got his answer machine. And I said, Steve, I am so sorry. My anger got the best of me. I really am trying to get myself back to where I once was, and it was just something that shouldn't have never happened, and I truly apologize for it. Now, the thing that I love about this whole story is what actually came up after the fight. I mean, we all know that Steve Kerr, as a man who was one of the nicest guys in the NBA landscape, but the fact that he protected himself was the right thing to do. He says that he was embarrassed by how he was being treated, and he wasn't going to put up with it. He also said that it was a totally different relationship from that point on. There was also mutual respect, with Kerr feeling that Jordan trusted him on the court more in important situations. Which we now know is obviously true, just look at the time Jordan trusted Kerr to take the game winner in the 1997 NBA Finals. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Now, it has to be said, the Bulls couldn't have been great without their immense talent of Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman, but they couldn't have been historic without coming together with players like Steve Kerr, Ku Coach, and Ron Harper. The Chicago Bulls avoided major issues after the Kerr-Jordan incident, and never lost more than two games in a row, taking on the characteristics of its coach and its leader. The same relentless that produced the training camp tussle led to arguably the best season of all time. After the incident, the Chicago Bulls finished with a 72-10 record, which lasted as the greatest record of all time until obviously the Golden State Warriors beat it, but I mean, the Bulls won a ring, so I, I still say it's the greatest record of all time. Now, from the NBA landscape and the outside world, from afar we don't really see what goes on in practices, and we're pretty much unaware of the little day-to-day -day arguments, but I can almost guarantee you that fights like this, maybe not to this extreme, but fights like this do happen a lot of the time, and it's not always a bad thing, it's just two players, two competitive players just getting into it, and I think it's honestly fine, I think we should maybe not hear more about it, but we should maybe sometimes get a little bit of insight from NBA players because I think it's pretty cool hearing stories like this and sometimes it can ultimately be the catalyst for creating tighter bonds just like Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr. I honestly think that without the scuffle between Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr, the relationship between the two players probably wouldn't have been so strong. And I also want to mention the fact that Steve Kerr is probably one of the most genuine people in the basketball world, whereas Michael Jordan, no matter how great he was as a player, which I mean, he was obviously the greatest player of all time. He really wasn't the nicest bloke, and I'm pretty sure most of us know that. He was a great player, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying his basketball talent was not there. It was the greatest. He is the GOAT. But I'm saying, as a person, I don't think he was the nicest bloke. And that's just part of his nature. That's how he was. That's his competitive nature, and that's the reason why he was so good. That's just how he was. Ultra competitive. So I'm just saying, the next time you hear about two players getting into it at practice, maybe it's not because they hate each other, alright? Maybe it's the fact that it's just two competitive guys getting into it, and to be honest, it might even bring them closer together on the court. 
And I hope you guys enjoy the video. I just thought it'd be a really interesting video for those that don't know about the time Michael Jordan punched Steve Kerr in the face. And to be honest with you, Kerr wasn't the only player Michael Jordan punched in the face, which is pretty insane, but that's who Michael Jordan was. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for more videos just like this. I honestly appreciate all the new subscribers because we've been getting a lot of new subscribers, which thank you guys so much for sticking around and enjoying the content. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. I think you guys will love this channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment some of your own ideas that you'd like me to make a video on, and that would be absolutely amazing. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace! Stuff.